Hey there, everybody. Kelvin Chin here. Hope everybody's doing okay these days in this whole COVID-19 environment that we're living in. Um, hope everybody's doing okay. Um, I wanted to talk today about uh, the idea of angels and fear. Uh, not something that you often hear people talking about, but I wanted to get explicit about this just to, as you guys know, my goal in everything I'm doing with my nonprofits and all my work now that I'm doing full time is about reducing fear in the world and increasing happiness as a result. That's my immediate and long-term goal. Um, and some of you may know that I've had well, a lot of experience personally with angels, communicating with angels started in 1986, angels, archangels, and so forth, um, and, and went on for some number of years. Um, I'll, I'll touch on that throughout our brief talk today, but just a kind of overview. Um, the reason this is coming up, and I wanted to talk about it soon, um, is because there's a lot of fear going around the internet and through the social media airwaves, so to speak, about uh, the state of the world, the state of the United States, the state of other countries and so forth. Um, so really what I'm going to say applies to everybody in the world. It doesn't matter what country you may be listening from. Uh, as you guys know, I work so far across 42 different countries helping people reduce their fears about whatever. Um, So that's the kind of the background, the overall context in which I want to talk about this, these ideas today with you. Um, there's a longer essay that I wrote that some of you who are on my Facebook, um, you know, have seen and may have read already. Uh, but I'm going to touch on some key points, some key principles out of that essay, um, which you can see at kelvinchin.org, my more spiritual website. Go to the blog page and you'll see it there. Um, here's the thing, uh, these fear messages that are getting passed around the internet about the state of the world, the state of our country and so forth, um, by various people, um, I'm going to focus on several groups of people immediately, psychics, spiritual leaders and, or preachers, uh, and that type of folk, because those folks tend to have fairly big followings and people when they're talking about angels and getting messages that are either through dreams, visions, uh, telepathic communications and so forth, tend to go to those types of people as, um, uh, as sources of information. Um, and I just want to give you kind of a perspective historically about this kind of these kinds of fear-based messages um, that have been disseminated from the other side, we'll call it, uh, the afterlife, whatever you want to call, uh, by various beings for millennia. Some of you guys know my memories go back 6,000 years. So um, I'm giving you a broad context here based on some of my personal experiences over the last 6,000 years when I'm talking here. Um, you can get into, you, you know, what I'm going to talk about today is a, a small piece of what I talk about in uh, much greater detail in the context of afterlife and so forth uh, in my afterlife series. And if you want to check that out, I'm starting another one. I do it about every four months. I'm starting another one in a few weeks. But uh, feel free to go to kelvinchin.org, my website, and look for that program. Um, and you can you, you, you can learn more about it. But the point of my saying that is I'm going to give you a small piece of, 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 of that of a section of that uh, of that uh, six part series that I that I talk about, uh, because I think it's so timely right now with what we're going through in the world and the fear that seems to be coming from the other side through psychics and preachers, various spiritual leaders. Um, this is something that historically, as I, as I briefly alluded to a second ago, 
This has been going on for millennia. This is not a new phenomenon. This has been going, anytime there's a crisis on planet Earth, there, there's an uptick, there's an increase in activity from beings on the other side, whether it's about, you know, around a world war, uh, it was big around the Civil War and after the Civil War with all the deaths that we had in the United States. Um, it happens after um, when a millennia is coming to it, a millennium is coming to the to an end or uh, at the end of a century, 1699, 1599, 1499, 1899, 1999. There's always a huge uptick in, in these types of um, communications uh, from the other side, and very often they have f they're fear based. There's fear around them, and the message typically is what the message typically is: be afraid, be afraid of the end of the world, or be afraid what's going to happen in the United States civilization over the coming months or years. Um, and as I said, they may come to these psychics and spiritual uh, uh, leaders, preachers, and so forth through visions, dreams, etc. Um, but let's talk about this. Let's unbundle this a little bit, okay? Um, again, I started having um, communications with the other side in 1986. This is very normal for me. This is not something, uh, it's not a gee whiz experience for me anymore. It's all, it, it's been around, it's been, it's very normal. It's a very part of, uh, part of my, 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 my normal experience is sometimes communicating with the other side. And initially what happened was I got, ex I got communicated with by light beings, we'll call them, from the other side, and they seem to be angels and archangels and so forth. I say seem to be because who can know for sure, right? But they but they profess to be, and there was it's very, very powerful energy. All right. My experience as an earthbound human being myself was that the energy was very, very powerful. So here's principle number one: do not equate power with truth. Powerful energy does not necessarily mean that they are that they are that they are sharing with you accurate information. Okay? Power just means power. That's all it is. We've seen it historically on planet Earth. Think about it on this side of the veil. On this side in 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 physical reality, there have been many many powerful people throughout history who have not been very kind and uh, altruistic, let's just say, uh, human beings. Genghis Khan, uh, that guy over in Germany in the Second World War, you know who I'm talking about. All right? These are very powerful beings. That doesn't mean that you listen to everything that they say and that everything that they say is in your best interest or is accurate or truthful. Okay? So don't equate power with truth or accuracy. Um, so back to this whole notion of light beings. Many of you may have had experiences with light beings on the other side. Um, and they're not all bad. I'm just saying light beings are light beings. They may, some, some of them are more powerful than other ones. But the fact, the mere fact that you may get communicated with by a light being or a psychic or a preacher you know is communicated uh, with by a light being, it, it me, it's relatively meaningless. I want to give you perspective on these things. Keep perspective so that you can make your own assessment, your own judgment about these messages that, are, that seem to be coming from the other side um, about such dire consequences on planet Earth and all of this. I'm not saying that we don't have serious issues going on right now with COVID-19 and the unrest that exists throughout the world. Look, we still have wars going on. There are people still killing each other in various parts of the world. I'm not denigrating. I'm not downplaying the seriousness of all of that. I'm just saying be aware of the source of information that, that are sharing with you that you should be afraid about whatever those items are that I just mentioned. 
all right? Because, yes, we need to be smart, but we do we need to live in fear that the world is going to end or the U.S. civilization? I, I've been hearing these people talking to me, some of my own students, expressing concern about some message that somebody is getting from the other side, supposedly. Okay, so back to this whole idea of light beings. First of all, principle number one about light beings, do not assume that power means truth. We just said that. Principle number two, do not assume that light beings know more than you do. Because think about it. Once we die, we're all light beings. So the fact that we are a light, that a person communicating or a being communicating with you is a light being does not mean anything other than they are, no longer have, or maybe never ever did have, a physical biological body. They are a light being. Okay, so the mere definition of a light being does not mean they know more than you. They might know more than you, but it doesn't mean definitionally that they absolutely more know than you. Question, question, question. Not only that, but if they do more, know more than you about item X, that doesn't mean that they know more than you about y, item Y. All right? First of all, just think about it for a second. Step back. All right? Some of the light beings on the other side may be our dead relatives, our dead loved ones. Okay? And I'm not saying they wouldn't have our best interests at heart. Hopefully they would be have our best interests at heart, right? Um, but there are other beings on the other side who um, who may have never been in a physical body like our dead loved ones have been. And if they're giving you advice about how to live your life in a physical biological body, think about that. This is not about the topic we're talking about, but but I just want you to step back. What What basis do they know about how to live life on planet Earth where they've never, ever been in a physical, biological body on planet Earth. That's somebody looking at planet Earth, telling people on planet Earth how they should live their lives? Question that. How, how much do they know about what your life is living on planet Earth? Quite frankly, I would argue that you know more about what life is living on planet Earth than they do who have never been in a physical, biological body. Think about that, all right? But again, back to this light being uh, uh, concept. We're all light beings. Everyone's a light being. Our dead relatives, our friends, angels, others. I don't know how you want to define, you know, there were many others that may definitionally, you may have different, different definitions for who are other beings in the universe, whatever. Everybody, you and I are light beings, essentially. Yes, okay, you see my body here, physical, biological body is dense and so forth and so on. I get it, all right? We live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a slower, we'll just say, a slower vibratory energy field on planet Earth than what we're calling the other side, the afterlife, whatever you want to call it, okay? But everybody, when you die, we're all light beings. We're all equal in that respect, Okay? Here's another point, um, as I just alluded to. Sometimes the light beings are recognizable who may come to you with messages because they're your, your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, your grandmother. In other words, somebody who you really know or a friend, a close friend, somebody whose personality you really do recognize. And you recognize something about well, the way they articulate, the way they feel. Sometimes people will communicate from the other side and you'll feel you'll get a smell uh, of them, you know, the, the, their cologne their, or their body, the way their body smells or even, uh, or, or their perf favorite perfume, whatever. So there are, ident there are identifiable features that sometimes people can have who we recognize because we have a, we have a personal history with them, all right? Um, other times we will get communications or you may or a preacher or a psychic may get communications uh, from beings on the other side who we don't have a personal connection with. What's the knee-jerk reaction for most people, most especially preachers out there? Their knee-jerk reaction is that God came to me. How do you know that? Oh, well, it was a light being. I just debunked that whole light being argument, right? We're all light beings. 
There are trillions of life beings, right? 7.6 billion people on planet Earth right now, the current human population, I guarantee you are going to be light beings on the other side when they physically die. And then all the animals, that doesn't count all the animals, our dogs and our cats and our horses and who the what, they die. Their, their soul, their spirit, their consciousness, whatever you want to call that, continues after they physically, biologically die. They're a light being. There's zillions of light beings. Just because a light being comes, talks to you, Mr. or Ms. Preacher, doesn't mean that that is God. All right? So uh, the source, the one, the whatever, however you define God in your own terminology. And I'm respectful of people's beliefs. That's totally okay. And I'm fine. I mean, I'm good with everybody's beliefs. You guys who've worked with me know. I'm not here to change people's beliefs. But I am here to reduce fear. And if somebody believes that that's God, that's fine too. I'm not... Who am I to question what their experience is? But all I'm saying is, from your standpoint, as my potential students who are listening to this, hopefully I'm doing this as a teacher-student relationship, um, I, I, I suggest I, 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 I suggest that you question whether or not their belief system uh, is an accurate representation of truth, of what is really happening, okay? Because if their assumption is merely because it's a light being, that's really flimsy evidence as far as I'm concerned, okay? That's all I'm saying, all right? Um, bottom line point is that whatever the person's experience is of a light being, we'll refer to this being on the other side as, it's filtered either through their personal experience, like they've had a personal experience with that person, maybe a spiritual leader, um, like I've had experiences, as many of you know, with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who was a... Uh, uh, a teacher of mine both this lifetime and 2,000 years ago when he was John the Baptist. And so I have a, I, I recognize his energy, okay? It's more likely that I'm right about that than not. But again, you should still question me when I say that because who do we know? You know, who knows? Absolutely for sure, right? It, it, but, but is the information, I always say the source is less important than the content of the information. So is the information that me or the preacher or whoever is giving you, is it useful and is it fear-based? Is it full of fear? Because messages that are full of fear, my recommendation is go the other way. Um, I don't care how passionately the preacher is or the psychic is about, about their belief, about where they're getting an information from and, and uh how, how, how ironclad the information is, again, it's their belief. You need to base your actions and your life on whether you believe what they're saying, okay? Piece of, piece of advice, it's my strong suggestion. Another point I want to cover with you briefly here is predictions. This idea of predictions. There's this prediction idea out there that's flowing around the internet. It's you know, it's flying around social media and so forth. Whenever you hear people talk about prophesying or predictions, question, 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 not only that, but everything else they're saying. Why do I say that? Because the idea of predictions flies in the face of the fundamental universal principle that exists throughout our universe of free will. That we have free will, that not just us, but that everybody, all the angels on the other side, the archangels, the humans, the animals, the whatever, have free will thinking minds. What does free will mean? Free will means personal choice. All right. I heard this very well-known spiritual leader on a YouTube video. So one of my students said, oh, listen to this guy. He says some good things. I read, what? He says, like, he was saying... There's no such thing as free will. There's only destiny, predestination. There's no such thing as free will because he said his evidence was, was that uh, if there was free will, then he should be able to think, oh, I want to be a millionaire, and I'm not a millionaire, he said. Well, that 
that's a, that's idiotic. That is like so dumb. That is clearly somebody who has no idea what free will is. All right, free will means personal choice. Do we have personal choice? Obviously, we do. People will choose this. People will choose that. Not everybody agrees on this. Not everybody agrees on that. That means people have free will. All right. So what does that mean in terms of this idea of predictions? That means all we can say, the farthest we can go in terms of predictions being accurate, is talk about probabilities. So are there probabilities that something may be more or less accurate? Absolutely, yes. But can we say with certainty that something will happen? Absolutely, no. That's the one absolute we can say, is that there's no certainty in life because free will is a fundamental principle in the universe. And if you don't believe me about that, just look around in your life and be honest about it and rational and candid, right? Nothing is certainty. There's no certainty in life. Uh, no, nothing is certain, all right? It's all probabilities. So, so when you hear messages like, there's this message out there, well, things could get really messy in the United States. Things could get really messy in, in the world. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no kidding. Einstein. Uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. But what you should be asking yourselves, in my opinion, is why is that person invoking fear? What is their agenda? And even if they're a preacher, getting message from somebody on the other side who they claim is God, first of all, I guarantee you, uh, if God exists, do you think God wants to be creating fear in people's uh, consciousness? Do you think God wants to uh, be messing people's up, m messing people's lives up? Uh, uh, hello, uh, I don't think so. So, uh, if so, that's not a God or a God small G or a spiritual leader or a whatever I would ever want to worship or. Uh, quite frankly, I would have zero respect for. Uh, but um, that's me. I leave it to you to decide. But question, why invoke fear? Basically, it distills down to one reason, and you guys already know the answer to this, because you've been living life on planet Earth. Why do people invoke fear? They invoke fear to control. They're trying to control. So what would be an angelic agenda, for example, on the other side, why would they, why would some angels want to invoke fear? First of all, let me just make some comments about angels. They are not monolithic. I am not knocking all angels. All angels do not think alike. That's what monolithic means. They do not think alike and believe everything the same. Just like you and I, as human beings, we're not monolithic. The human race is not monolithic. We don't all believe the same things, eat the same food, do the same things. We're all making individual free will choices all the time. Well, the angels do the same thing. So if an angel is communicating with a preacher or psychics and promoting fear, what would be the agenda of that angel? Well, they may couch it in language saying, well, I'm really looking out for human beings. I really want to help planet Earth because it's the, things are so messy and this and that. I want to help and blah, 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 blah. Okay, then do something productive, I would say, in terms of promoting that and don't use fear as a motivator because fear contracts. Fear is fear causes stress. But why would this let's just step back for a second. Why would an angelic being or a light being or who knows what? We don't know if they're angels or just, you know, some some it, for all we know, it could be Mussolini on the other side talking to that preacher, right? Because he's a light being. Mussolini's a light being. And maybe Mussolini wants to cause trouble and starts communicating through some psychic or some preacher saying, oh, da 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 and wants to mess with the United States. Says, oh, well, the United States, this is what's going to happen, blah, 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 blah. We don't know for sure, right? But why would why would somebody do that? Well, there's all kinds of reasons. But here's one reason why followers followers because creating followers if if you're an angel and you're you want to create you want to create followers for your subset of some angelic religion 
you have some offshoot of the angelic. There's lots of angelic religions, first of all, on the other side. As I mentioned to you guys, I've had many, many, I had several years experience communicating with angels in the mid 1980s. And uh, they decided to go their own way. I went, went my own way and so forth. But uh, there are many, many, many different belief systems within the angelic realm. Many different belief systems. And a belief system is what I refer to as a religion. So there are many, many religions. Might there be some religions over there that don't have as altruistic, let's say, as altruistic and a heartfelt um, uh, approach towards uh, promoting their religion than some of the other angels who I've communicated with. Yes, that's possible because they are minds. They have, they have desires. They have hopes, dreams, and expectations just like any other mind. And maybe they think the ends justify the means. I don't espouse that principle, but many people do on this side and the other side, okay? Maybe some of these angels espouse that belief system. The ends justify the means. I want to help planet Earth, and I want to help them in whatever way I can. And it doesn't matter if I tell uh, fabrications to them or even create fear in them because I'm helping them. The ends justify the means. Not something that, not, 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 a, not, a, not a spiritual uh, uh, um, teacher I would want to follow. But some people are living in so much fear that they will gravitate towards that, that person because, or that being, or that angel or whoever, because they are powerful and they are convincing and they are persuasive. All right? Just like, as a quick aside, just like Paul did this 2,000 years ago. Saul of Tarsus, he's known as uh, 2,000 years ago, he created a whole belief system that was very fear based. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, realize this, but quick aside, religious historians all agree, and those who have read, who read Greek, have read the, the Greek letters written by Paul, and the, the original Greek letters written by Paul, it's very clear. Paul was an apocalypse believer, and there are angels on the other side who are, who are promoters of this idea of the apocalypse, the end of the world, all right? Paul was an end of the world believer. Paul went around preaching, and we tried to rein him in, and he said, okay, I'll stop it. And he went out, and he just did, continued doing it. And he got lots of followers, because this, his formula was very simple. He said, the end of the world is happening in six weeks. Do not buy property. Don't get married. Don't waste your time. Just follow this belief system that Paul created. And if you follow this Paul-created belief system, you will skip to the head of the line. You'll be the first in heaven. He got a lot of followers, and he still gets a lot of followers uh, for those people who are still promoting that belief system. It's very simple. It's great marketing, but it's untrue. All right? Instead, what I suggest that you do is instead of following blindly a preacher who is claiming that he gets a message from God who is, who is fear-mongering, again, big red flag. God fear-mongering? Uh-uh. Not a God I would want to follow, but instead follow yourself. That's my suggestion. Follow yourself. Turn within. Ask yourself by turning within, does that make sense? Do these messages make sense? You know, what, they, what do they typically do? They will take a, a, a known fact that's not known to the masses, but, for example, coinage. I heard this one. The coinage is going down. They're right. Yeah, coinage has been going down. The, the, the creation of coins in the United States has been going down for many, many years, decades. People are using less coins because, hello, last I checked, I went on Amazon and I bought something. Actually, I bought some protein powder this morning. What did I use? Did I use coins? No, I used my credit card. Uh, hello, this is not an unknown fact. So they use a known fact. This is a classic uh, technique that many, I know, look, I'm not knocking all psychics. I know some great psychics, okay? And the psychics who have clean minds, they can filter their own junk out and not tell you their junk through the filtration of their junk, okay? But uh, this is a classic uh, pen and Teller move, you know, pen and two they are. You know, they debunk the fake psychics. There are real psychics and there are fake psychics. But one of, the, one of the classic fake things to do 
is to take a known fact like coin production is going down, weave that into an argument, and then extrapolate that and create all kinds of fear based on that that's extrapolated out of that known fact. Then you go back and you go, uh, oh, wow. Uh, that that guy that, that 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 psychic or preacher that he was he or she was right. It did have there was the coinage. Look, the coinage is down. Well, the coinage production has been going down for decades since the creation of the credit card and the internet. All right. Um, so use your common sense in your own fear radar. That's my point. And the last point I want to leave you with, and I'll look at. I don't know if any people have questions here on the on the chat thing, but I'll look at it in a second. Judge people and minds when i say people i mean human beings on this side uh and i mean beings on the other side whether it be angels dead loved ones doesn't matter if it was your great your grandmother you know did you listen to her when she was here <laughs> everything she said was it all good advice or was it 50 percent or 30 percent or 80 percent good advice don't listen to anything that anybody says you i don't care if they're a light being or not Everybody's a light being. Judge, judge by the behavior, not merely the words. Do their words match their actions? All right? Especially those on this side where we can see what their actions are. All right? Does it make sense? Does it logically make sense? And use your own common sense. And don't buy into fear. Fear is a great motivator. It gets people to move. All right? But is it rational? Is it based on information and content? Okay, that is verifiable. All right, let me just quickly, let's just say, hey. Hi, Sharon, Nat, good to see you guys. Gwen, Sai. Um, one must first question their own mind content and how they feel about themselves and others. If you are vibrating high and indeed, blah, 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 so-and-so so spiritual leader like Jesus or so forth comes through, you see there, you know, yep, exactly. So it, so it's very, it's the filtration issue. Exactly. Do not believe anyone just blindly, basically is what Rodney's saying. I'm paraphrasing what you're saying. Those of you who are on, you can read what he's saying. Um, you know, re, your soul is your larger sense of mind. That's what I, how I define soul. So when you hear just Rodney, just so you know, when you, when you hear me use the word mind or consciousness, to me, that's the same, same, same thing as soul. Um, hey, Susan, long time. Um, so here's the thing. I use the word mind, Rodney. I don't know if you're familiar with my work. But when I use the word mind, I mean soul, spirit, consciousness, or whatever. Because I don't just mean, I, I use the word mind because I work across so many countries and religions. I work with people, who are all, really, all religions are atheists, agnostics, and no, no religious, th you know, belief system, whatever. This fine, um, but I use the word mind because it's neutral and it's easily understood by people in other cultures who I work with, forty-two different countries so far. But I mean, I don't mean just our conscious thinking mind. That's what I call the supermarket aisle mind. I mean our huge mind too. So our vastness of our mind. So people sometimes refer to that as soul, spirit, consciousness, whatever, higher self. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's all these different labels. To me, my mind is expansive. I've been meditating for 50 years. I started having reincarnation memories in 1977, as, I, as some of you know. And so my, the expansion of my mind, soul, consciousness, spirit, whatever you want to call it, is fluid. It's not that I have my mind and then I have my soul. You know, no, my mind is connected to my soul. It is all one who I am. Now, my who I am is very different. My awareness of who I am is very different from who I, who I experienced myself as 50 years ago or 40 years ago or 30 years ago, for example. So it's a continual growing process, but I understand what you're saying. Um, well, you know, there are all kinds of minds on the other side. It's a mistake to assume that any information from the other side or all information from the other side is of what you're referring to of, of high vibration, Rodney. Because not every, when we die, we don't all of a sudden all become enlightened. When we die, our mind, soul, spirit continues. 
and whoever we are, we continue. Now, can that change over long periods of time? Yes, I get into that in my afterlife series. Um, but 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 it it takes a while. It takes a it takes sometimes many lifetimes for people's fundamental core wiring to change, and they real and they have to want it to change. Nobody on the other side is waving a magic wand saying, "Okay, now you're good. Oh, now you're an enlightened being. Oh, now you're not a cruel person anymore." That person, him or herself, has the free will to decide or not decide whether or not to make those changes. That's fundamentally within that person, all right? So um, um, I think we're kind of on the same uh, wavelength, Rodney, but I just wanted for everybody, just for teaching purposes, because I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel uh, afterwards every, uh, also. But it's a good point that you just reminded me, so thank you for, from a teaching standpoint for helping me raise that point again. Because I, I've seen that over the decades many, many times. People just blindly follow whatever information they got through the from the other side directly or through a psychic or a scorer or a, a preacher or a spiritual leader or whoever it is um a friend it could be friends saying a, a friend saying oh i got this from the other side blah blah, blah. do not blindly follow anything that's my message use your own rational thinking your soul spirit mind consciousness to assess that information and and if it is fear based, big question mark in my mind. That's my suggestion. Okay, so again, um, feel free to check out uh, the longer essay on this idea of fear and 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 maybe coming from the other side um, on my website kelvinchin.org. And um, I hope you all are you know have a have a great happy life. If we don't see each other again. Uh, and for those of you uh, who I am in touch with regularly, I look forward to our next, our next uh, communication, our next, next touching. I call that a touch. Um, I've long called this a touch. It's interesting. I, maybe this is a new idea to share with people. Because we cannot physically touch people um, uh, because of this COVID-19, or at least, I mean, we can touch them. But you know what I mean? We are, we are discouraged from doing so much physical touching but think about all this as psychic touching when we touch each other when we talk to each other on the phone or on zoom video conference when we facetime with each other when we text each other when we email each other it's a touching it's a touching right um even psychically we can be touching each other okay so um have a great uh weekend i guess i just taught a bunch of new people to meditate today <laughs> lost track. What time is it? What day is it? Friday. Have a great weekend and take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones.